Bible and look at Matthew chapter number 13. Matthew chapter number 13. In Matthew chapter number 13, and just in a minute it'll show up if you don't have a Bible. There's some pew Bibles there in the uh, seats if you would like to have one of those uh, for, for the reading. If not, it'll be on the screen for you. Look at Matthew chapter number 13, and let's begin reading in verse number 24. If you're there, say amen. amen. If you're not, say hang on. All right. Matthew 13, verse 24 says, Another parable put he forth unto them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is likened unto a man which sowed good seed in his field. But while men slept, his enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat, and went his way. But when the blade was sprung up and brought forth fruit, then appeared the tares also. So the servants of the household came and said unto him, Sir, dost thou not sow good seed in thy field? From whence then hath it tares? He said unto them, An enemy hath done this. The servant said unto him, Wilt thou then that we go and gather them up? But he said, Nay, lest while you gather up the tares, you root up also the wheat with them. Let both grow together until the harvest. And in the time of the harvest, I will say to the reapers, Gather you together first the tares, bind them in bundles to burn them, but gather the wheat into my barn. Let's go to the Lord in a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, I pray, Lord, you'd help in the next few minutes, God, that we need your help. We thank you for the reading of your word, and Lord, help us never to take that for granted. God, I pray that you would bless us for the next few minutes. In Jesus' name we pray, and all of God's people said, Amen. Amen. Here is a parable. You say, what is a parable? A parable is an earthly story with a heavenly meaning. So Jesus would use parables to get people's attention. He would use parables to relate to the common man. So when Jesus would say a sower went out to sow seed in his field, they knew what he was talking about. And uh, so when Jesus would say there was a woman in the kitchen making bread and leaven got in the bread and all that, everybody knew what he was talking about. So when Jesus spoke with this earthly story with a heavenly meaning, he could get people's attention because it was something they could relate to. Matter of fact, the disciples, this is the only parable that the disciples came back and said, they didn't ask anything about the sower going to seed. They didn't ask anything about the woman in the kitchen. They didn't ask anything about the mustard seed. They didn't ask anything else about any of these other parables except this one. They ask about, now Dalton, go to the next uh, uh, portions of scripture after he does his parables they come back then Jesus sent the multitudes away and went into the house and his disciples came in him saying declare us unto us the parable of the tares and in the field they were concerned about it he answered and said unto them he that now uh, how many of y'all well I mean they would ask that um, some people think the Bible is hard to understand the Bible's not hard to understand watch I'll show you he answered and said unto them, He that soweth the good seed is the Son of Man. Y'all get that? So the man that soweth the good seed is the Lord Jesus Christ. The field is the world. Everybody got that? The good seed are the children of the kingdom. That good seed are the saved, right? But the tares are the children of the wicked one. That's the unsaved. Everybody get that? The enemy that sowed them is the devil. You got that? The harvest is the end of the world, and the reapers are the angels. Everybody got that? See, the Bible's not hard to understand. Sometimes it's hard to believe. And so here we have a parable of the wheat and the tares. The wheat and the tares, this parable, these... Uh, uh, man went out and sold wheat into his field, and an enemy came and sold tares among the wheat. Uh, some of his workers said, hey, you want us to go through there and tear up the tares uh, so just the wheat will be there? They said, no, 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 because if you do that, you'll mess up the wheat. Let them all grow together, and then we'll separate them at the time the harvest, I'll take the tares, I'll bind them up and burn them, and I will take the wheat and gather it into my barns. Everybody understand that? 
Here's the parable, and it's a very simple parable, and the story doesn't take very long to understand. But what I find in churches today is people on the church rows, they think they're saved, they look like they're saved, they talk like they're saved, they sing like they're saved, they look like wheat, but they're tired. They repeated some prayer when they was four or five or six years old. Or one, two, three, repeat after me. Five, six, seven, let's all go to heaven. Eight, nine, ten, let's all do it again. And all that kind of garbage. Listen, repeating a prayer is not going to get you any closer to heaven. Joining a church is not going to get you any closer to heaven. Getting baptized in every creek and holler till the tadpoles know your first name is not going to get you any closer to heaven. There's only one thing that will get you into heaven, and that's Jesus Christ the Lord. The wheat and the tares, they are growing up together. Billy Graham, whether you like him or not, makes no difference, but Billy Graham said this, the greatest mission field is the church. Think about it. 200 million church members in America. 200 million church members. Now let me ask you something. If all 200 million church members in America were saved, do you think we would be in the mess we're in today? So somebody might be right when they say there are people that are a member of a church, but they're not a member of his church. There is a difference. And so this parable tells us that the wheat... Uh, and the tares look just alike. You couldn't tell them apart in their early stages. You can only tell them apart when they get ready for harvest. Then they start showing the difference when they begin to produce fruit. The fruit will always tell you the root. The fruit will always tell you what the root is. You can't tell an apple tree till it starts producing apples. Amen. Because the fruit will display and declare what is in the root. And a lot of people don't have their root in the ground. Amen. Don't shout me down while we're preaching good now. Jesus uses something that people can relate to. Now let me say this. I've got three points, one poem, and a tear-jerking illustration, and we're going to go eat. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Three points, and you're going to get them. I'm going to give them to you right now. The sowing, the growing, and the mowing. Is that not simple? The sowing, the growing, and the mowing. Now, number one, the sowing. The sowing of the wheat. Jesus is the farmer, and the wheat are the believers. We understand all of that. The wheat is Christians have some similarities because did you realize this? In studying wheat, wheat doesn't have a deep root system in this world. Let me get to the Pentecostal side. Wheat is not, it's in the ground, but it's just barely there. It's more pointed toward heaven than it is in the ground. Wheat is more pointed toward heaven than it is because wheat sets its affection on things above, not on things of this earth. It's not deeply rooted, just barely. It doesn't take very much to pull root, uh, wheat out of the ground because it's not in the ground very much. It's not rooted in the world. A lot of people are more rooted in the world than they are Christ. You see, you got believers, you got unbelievers, and then you got make believers. You got saints and you got ain'ts. You got a lot of people that grew up in church, but they never grew up in Christ. A lot of people know the hymns, they just don't know Him. Somebody help them. This is where we're living at today. Because if 200 million church members were actually saved on their way to heaven, we wouldn't be having the mess we've got going on in our country today. Amen. Wheat doesn't last very long. Wheat uh, is planted in the ground. It grows and it's harvested and it moves on. And I think the Bible says something like this. Uh, life is like a vapor. It appears a little time and then it vanisheth away. It doesn't take long to realize. Uh, uh, it doesn't. It seems like yesterday when I was graduating high school and back. It seems like yesterday when I had hair. 
And just like that, <laughs> it's gone. And it uh, seems like yesterday that uh, you were going to college and, and, and all those kinds of things. Uh, but let me say this. Life is like a vapor. It appears a little time and then it vanishes away. You say, preacher, I've lived 70, 80 years, whatever. But ladies and gentlemen, in the whole big scheme of things, that's, that's just a vapor. One of these days, you're going to make the bed for the last time. One of these days, you're going to wash the dishes for the last time. One of these days, you're going to clean the house for your last time. And some of you are looking at me going, I don't remember the last time I've done those things. <laughs> there is a problem. But one of these days, I, I will preach my last sermon, sing my last song. Why? Because life is like a vapor. It appears a little time, and then it vanishes away. Are you a wheat? Or are you a tank? The wheat doesn't last very long. They tell you in the military, be ready to leave just on a moment's notice. Don't unpack very much. Be ready. Some of you military families know what I'm talking about. They'll bounce you from here, there, and yonder. You can't, you can't make a stake in nothing very long because they'll pick you up and move you somewhere else. That's the way a Christian ought to be. This, this uh, world is not my home. I'm just a passing through. My treasures are laid up somewhere beyond the blue. Stay in your seat. Don't get excited. But this world is not our home. Don't get satisfied with what's going on around here. We're looking for a city not made with hands built by our maker who is God. Wheat is like that as far as a Christian. Now, you're thinking, preacher, now what are you trying to get us to do this morning? I'll tell you what the Bible says to do. 2 Corinthians 13, 5, examine yourselves whether ye be in the faith. Prove your own selves. Know you not your own selves. How that Jesus Christ is in you except you be reprobate. You know what that Bible says? Examine yourself. Well, it's not my job. You say, well, I know my grandma will say. I know so-and-so will say. You really don't know that. All you know is about you. You say, well, so-and-so this and so-and-so that. Listen, you're looking on the outward, uh, but God looks on the heart. We look on the outward and we say, hey, the wheat and the tares, they look alike and they sing songs alike and they preach alike and they use the same verses alike and they go to the same places alike. They're a member of the same church alike. But there's tares among the wheat. They think they're saved and they're not saved. They're trusting in something they did, something that uh, maybe somebody, I asked them one time, they I said, hey, are you saved? you born again. Do you know you're on your way to heaven? And they said, mama, when was that when I got saved? If you got to ask your mama when you got saved, there is a problem. Because when you get saved, you won't have to ask mama. You'll be telling mama. Amen. You say, preacher, why are you talking this way? Because I want you to go to heaven one day. We've got enough, we've got enough sissified preaching in this world to, I mean, uh, to, look, we don't need any more of that. We need some straightforward, uh, there ain't but two ways to go. It's either up or down. Amen. Amen. You say, well, I'm a member of such and such church. Well, guess what? That's wonderful. So was Judas. <laughs> Judas was a member of a church. He was one of Jesus' disciples. Uh, and he was a tear among the wheat. Wheat and the tares. Amen. Now, sowing of the wheat, uh, they say, well, uh, let me give you the sowing of the weeds. These sowing of the weeds, they say, what, what are tares? Tares looks just like the wheat, except on the top, if you were to eat a tear, uh, they say it's poisonous within itself. If you eat enough of it, it would probably cause death, but most time it just causes nausea, dizziness, and all that kind of stuff if you ate a tear. Uh, and, and if you, they all look the same, but if you get into the wheat and you ate a tear, it would cause nausea and dizziness, and uh, you could tell pretty quick you didn't have any wheat in your mouth. They look alike, and you know, the Bible says this. Now, some of you are not going to like this, but over there in 25, the enemy came by night and sowed these tares right among the wheat. And then verse 39, it says there, verse 38, it calls the tares the children of that wicked one. Have you ever heard this? 
Let me see if I can help our theology here. Have you ever heard this? Now, we're all God's children. Now, we're all God's children. Can I help you with that? We're all God's creation. You may not be all God's children. We're all God's. Now, some of you didn't like that, but I can't help it. That's Bible for you. Listen, the Bible says some of you are, you, you are of your father, the devil. Unsaved, don't know Christ, you're of your father, the devil. Isn't that odd? I don't want to be that. I don't want to be the children, that wicked one. I want to be the children of the Son of Man. Amen. Sowing of these particular weeds. Now, let me move on to this. The sowing, we got the growing. Guess what? They all grow together. They look the like. You can't tell the difference. One has fruit. One is empty. Uh, the devil attacks. Everybody thinks the devil is out in the nightclub somewhere. Think about this. The devil's not out in the nightclubs and all that kind of stuff. He's already got them. The devil is in churches. He's preventing. He does not want anybody to be saved. And go to heaven. Wheat and uh, the tares. Uh, one saved, one lost, uh, one real, one false. One authentic and one fake. Look at this right here. Now, I noticed these on the back table, and I brought them up here, and I thought they looked really nice. And from a distance, I looked at these, and I said, you know what? Those are very pretty. And I was thinking, I said, well, maybe. Uh, maybe they're real. And I got to looking, and... So they look real. They are, are pretty and nice color to them. There's no water in here. Why? Because dead things don't need water. <laughs> dead things don't need food. That's why we use fake flowers in churches. It just makes everything run smoother. <laughs> Somebody ain't got to put water in them to feed them and all that kind of thing. But, you know, it looks real, but when you get real close and you begin to touch and uh, they look real but they're fake matter of fact some they're in church but they're not in Christ you know I think that maybe Miss Jane I don't know whose these are but maybe maybe they won't get mad at me nope no water and they say well look here I'm in the word you can be in the Word and still be fake. Amen. I used to sing with a fella, and he, probably, he don't mind me telling it. His name was uh, Billy Hodges. Billy Hodges sang with us for a long time. Billy Hodges sang, stood by me. Sorry. Um, there you go. Back to normal. <laughs> Billy Hodges sang with us, I don't know how many years, and uh, left, went with the Dixie Echoes and the Florida Boys and all that kind of thing. But in between... Uh, the Dixie Echoes and when he went to the Kingdom Heirs that was uh, out in Dollywood uh, he got saved at a Brady Weldon crusade been singing all these years stand beside me and realized he didn't know Christ he realized he had some uh, religious experience and I'm going to tell you where we've gone wrong as churches especially vacation Bible schools we get all the kids down here let me tell you let me tell you what we can do I'm not bragging, but I can get all the little kids, all them little kids we had up here a while ago, watch. Ask those kids, hey, y'all want to go to heaven when you die? What kid's not going to say, yeah. <laughs> all right, if you really meant that, bow your head right here. Look here. God ain't within 100 miles of that if the Holy Spirit of God's not dealing with their heart. Like it, lump it, jump it, whatever you want to do, that's the truth. Vacation Bible school, we get all the kids up and all right, now if you want to go to heaven when you die, now you repeat this prayer after me and all this kind of uh, good stuff, and then, then we make the mistakes. All right, if you prayed that prayer, you're all saved. Oh, my goodness. And then later on in life, they realized they just went down because somebody else did or they, you know, repeated something. They went in the back room with somebody and they, you know, ran them through John's Boulevard, Romans Road, whatever, and they just did something to get the preacher. You know, I've, I've been in churches. Look, I'm telling you, I've been in churches where they would sing 49 verses of Just As I Am. 
and they would sing during the invitation 47 verses of Just As I Am till somebody came. Man, I got to where I'd just go down there just to get the invitation over. Hey, I'm a preacher's kid. I know how it all works. They just want somebody to come. Come on. Hey, I'll just go on down there. <laughs> Let's go eat. If you hadn't come in 47 verses, the Lord's probably not dealing with your heart. If somebody has to be saved, you don't have to pull, prod, milk it, trying to, you don't have to work it up. And fruit produces naturally without having to work it up. Wheat and tares. I remember my sister, my sister played the piano as I was growing up. The sister that's right above me, she played the piano at uh, the church where my dad pastored Trinity Baptist Church here in Dyersburg for 40 years or so. And uh, she was playing, I remember, I was actually leading the singing. And we were singing uh, the haven of rest. I've anchored my soul in the haven of rest. I'll sail the wide seas no more. The tempest may sweep or the wild stormy deep. We sing that for invitation. She's playing. I'm up there leading the singing. Brother Charles might have been. I don't remember who was there. But anyway, I was up there leading the singing. All of a sudden, the music stopped. Piano stopped playing. I said, who is messing up the invitation? Somebody's messing up the invitation. I'm up here leading. Really good. I mean, really good. And somebody is messing up the invitation because the music quit. She got up off that piano. Came down to where my dad was up front. And said, Dad, I thought I was saved. I need to be saved. Church piano player. Ray probably don't remember, uh, mind me telling this, but I remember when Ray got saved on a Wednesday night. Remember that? Holy Hills Baptist Church, Ray came down, thought he was saved, came down, said, hey, I need, it's dear revival, I think. Need to be saved. Yeah. Wheat and tear. Because there's a sowing and then there's a growing. My brother, same way, many, many years, grew up in church. Hey, look, we, we grew up in church. We went to church nine months before we was born. That's all we ever knew. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Later on in life, a few years uh, later, or, uh, 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 gone by, and my brother called my dad. Said, hey, get over here. I thought I was saved. I need to be saved. Yeah. See, people think, Getting saved, getting ready for heaven is something you do. Well, I joined the church. I went to vacation Bible school. I did this. I got baptized. I shook the preacher's hand. I signed a card. I got a banana and became one of the bunch. Yeah. Surely, I'm going to heaven. I know all the songs y'all sung this morning. I know them. I surely, I'm going to heaven. But do you know Jesus Christ? Does he live in here? There's a sowing, there's a growing. One of these days, there's going to be a mowing. The reaper's coming. And those angels are going to come. Revelation 14 is going to come. And those angels are going to start separating the wheat and the tares. He'll bind the tares. Listen, uh, look, I'm not happy about this, and I'm not proud about it. But look, if you do not know Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, if you take your last breath without Christ, you will go to hell. We don't hear preaching like that. You will go to hell. Do not pass go. Do not collect $200. You will go to hell without Christ. You say, well, I've done this. I've done that. My, my mama bought the first four rows. They got a little plaque on those pews and that stained glass windows and those, uh, those little plaques under those stained glass windows. My grandpa bought six of those and surely I get credit for that. You're trusting in something that's false, fake. There's a mowing day coming when Jesus is going to come and send the reapers. You say, preacher, how do I, how do I get saved? I'm going to tell you real quick. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And without faith, it's impossible to please God. This is the only way I can describe faith. Think about this at the circus. There's a fella, you know, y'all ever seen it on, you know, this guy, he's got a tight rope, he's probably 200 foot up in the air, and he's got a wheelbarrow. He's got that wheelbarrow, and he's going down that tight rope, and everybody 200 foot down are clapping, Woo! you know, he's doing like this, and boy, he's really, and everybody's like, oh, he's fixing to fall, he's fixing to fall. 
He gets to the other end, and he hollers at the crowd. He says, hey, y'all think I can do it again? Well, woo! Everybody's hollering. Caring. He goes back to the other side. You with me? He gets to the other side. He said, all right, y'all think I can do it again? Everybody, woo! Y'all have you done seen him do it twice? He says, okay, who wants to get in the wheelbarrow? Do you trust me like that? A lot of people know Jesus can save them. But until you get in that wheelbarrow, he ain't saving you. That Bible says there's none righteous, no, not one, Romans 3.10. Romans 3.23 says, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. That means grandma, grandpa, that means the best person, the best Christian you've ever known. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. They've missed the mark. The Bible says the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. You know, faith is like this. I believe with all of my heart that chair will hold me up. I believe it. I believe with all of my heart, 100%, I believe it. That chair can hold me up. Am I believing? Not while I'm standing here, I ain't. I believe in that chair. Stay with me, we fix it closed. Hang on, don't leave me right here. I believe in that chair. Do you know the Bible says the demons and the devil believe in Jesus? You know what the difference is? You say, well, if they believe in Jesus, then why ain't they saved? Because they've never believed on him. And once you believe on him, you put 100% of your weight on Jesus Christ and what he did for you on the cross of Calvary. It ain't joining the church. It's putting your faith and trust in Jesus Christ. Lord, nothing in my hands I bring. Simply to the cross I cling. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Salvation is very simple. If the Holy Spirit of Christ is dealing with your heart, you know it right now. He's dealing with your heart right now, and you know it. You know whether you're a wheat or whether you're a tear. You know whether Jesus lives inside of you or not. You know if you grew up in church or you grew up in Christ. You know if you know all the hymns, but do you know him? Are you like this? No life? You know how to play the part. You know how to look the part. You know how to do everything. But are you real? 200 million church members in America. They all can't be saved. Or we wouldn't be in the mess we're in today. I'm asking you right now to stand to your feet all the building. If you don't know Christ as your personal Savior, I'm asking you to come. If you don't know Him, I want you to know Him today. Just a few minutes. If you don't know Him, know Him today. He died for you. He paid your sin debt. Who's coming? Anybody else?
else? Anybody else?